Hello, wonderful viewer. This is KSP to Mars. We're at episode 61. I'm Lorenzo, and hopefully this episode will be done in a hasty, speedily matter, so you won't have to wait for multiple days again. What we're doing today is we're exploring options, and I will show you what the power of increased radiative capacity and better generators can do. Some very cut and dry um, subjects, but they will enable, as I said previously, continuously fired fusion engines. And let's see, we're packing two Mark II lander cans, so this baby can bring four people. We're bringing one, though, and I think we're going to go with Enfil, because this mission will require some courage, as do all missions, really. So, what is this about? I built a single stage to everywhere fusion-powered starship with planet fall capability, if said planet has an atmosphere, because it's mostly parachute-assisted. Actually, the landing is quite delicate. We need to reduce speed to below 50 meters per second at the deployment altitude. And that is why we're targeting Venus today. It has a thick atmosphere. And here's the ship. Look, we have the single fusion drive here, a big nuclear reactor that will power that, two small radiators that are now graphene radiators that will easily cool this. They will need to be deployed so we have packed two big boosters that will well, launch us straight up into space, hopefully. Because, of course, if we deploy these radiators in the atmosphere, they will be torn off. Now, this fusion engine deploys, uh, well, deploys, generates a lot of neutron radiation. So we're not going to turn it on until we're a few kilometers away from the KSC. Otherwise, Enfil would be the sole surviving Earth-bound member of this space program. That's not the, that's not uh, really ideal, so we're not doing that. We're waiting for about three kilometers in altitude before engaging that, and that's a number I made up. There's no in-game enforcing of that um, killing. Well, there actually there is, but it will only kill the Kerbals that are actually spawned in a mission or standing on EVA. Not nothing in this building. Oh, I forgot to bring a Kerbal engineering system. Well, that will be a pain later on, but for now you just have to trust me that after these boosters fire this whole ship has about 40 kilometers per second of delta v and that's at the maximum thrust level so we can reduce that to well get easily over 100 kilometers per second of delta v out of this fully scientifically equipped starship acceleration is just over 1g at the lowest isp setting that means it can reach orbit on its own and we're just going to fire the engine now, we're at 8 kilometers altitude. It can and will reach orbit on its own, but we will need a very inefficient and sort of roundabout trajectory to get there because of the relatively slow 1G acceleration. You will see what I mean as soon as these boosters uh, burn out. It is a good thing we did bring the boosters though because they will punch us beyond the, well, the thickest reaches of the atmosphere and break the sound barrier because of the sound barrier before ugh, before going Mach 1 the air drag is proportionally very much higher so that we're so that we're not going faster due to the boosters and we're higher up that uh, saves us a lot of wasted delta v on the fusion drive it's imperative that we reach space as soon as possible because if we look at the resources tab here the waste heat is uh, accumulating we it doesn't give us an estimation on when it will reach critical levels but well the higher we go, the less efficient the generators become as well. And we don't want to... Well, I think we're in the green across the board. I don't know why this is flashing. We don't want to well, get to a point where the radiators become so inefficient that we can't generate the power to fuel the lasers that will make the fusion go. So we want to go in space, then we can unfold these radiators and... Um, well, radiate the heat away. Don't know where I was going with that sentence. We have the six parachutes here, and the plan for landing is to get rid of most of our orbital speed in space, because obviously we don't have anything in the way of heat shielding, and then basically drop down through the atmosphere, come down on our engine most of the way to the surface, and then once we're going slow enough, deploy these parachutes and, well, use the parachutes, the engine, and the landing legs to come to a halt. We have ladders on the side here, and a do we have? Did I also bring a deployable ladder? We should have. Yeah, we have deployable ladders. There we have it. So we can land on Venus, make planet fall there, and actually get back into the pod again. I originally made this with a um, cupola module here on top, 
with this large radiator proved to be a rim that was uh, insurmountable for our poor Kerbal. He couldn't climb back up that ladder and well, it would be a pain to have that problem on Venus, obviously. Now, we're almost reaching space and we're sustaining about 860 meters per second of vertical speed. That's mostly um, courtesy of our mainsail booster system and the fusion engine is just, just maintaining that with its just over 1G acceleration potential. So what we're doing, we're going to get a nice high parabolic trajectory and then start burning sideways and well first of course we make sure that we have um, enough space time to do that and with space time I mean time in space not not a indeterminable quantity of the universe itself. This incidentally is the way many new players try to get to orbit, just shooting straight up and then turning over. It's horribly inefficient, but well, if you have a ship that's one stage that only does 1G, but has a lot of delta V, well, you might as well do it this way. And what I'm thinking, I will probably burn 10 to 15 kilometers per second of delta V just getting into orbit here. Remember we had 40. The transfer to Venus requires about 3, and there we will need let's call it 10 again to get down to the surface without using the atmosphere for braking so that will leave us with about 15 km per second once we are at Venus and we won't have the luxury of a booster system there of course for the in-space transits we can use the lower setting but I think it will be prudent to first establish Earth orbit and then send a refueling tanker so that we can go to Venus on the lowest possible speed and have as as much fuel as possible to well to actually get take off from Venus again. We will be doing so very very slowly with a thrust to weight ratio of just just over one actually. I think Venus has a lower gravity than Earth, but I hope it actually does because I didn't check that and it was just kind of intuition. If Venus is slightly more massive than Earth, then this this thing is not going anywhere. Eh we'll find out. Anyway, the slow ascent there will will only be helpful because we're going through 90 bars of air, so we're not going fast anyway. But I wonder how that works out. I did only bring the one Kerbal because this is very much unexplored t uh, territory. Worst comes to worst, we do crew reports, EVA reports from Ven Venusian space and the surface, and maybe he'll never go home again like so many of his friends never did. But we're shooting for the best and we might do something useful. Let's see, I think I might have to go a lot higher than this because our acceleration is so dreadfully low. Let's see, our apoapsis is now 200. Now I'm going to shoot up more. No, I'm going to shoot sideways until the vertical speed reaches zero. And then I'm going to shoot up more because I, I have the thrust to weight, just 1G, to well, make it make it stay at zero at least. So for now we're st we're going to start ever so slowly adding orbital speed. This might this might be ambitious to do it like this. <laughs> but, but hey, we have a single stage everywhere if it works, which is which is good. Which is good. Let's deploy the heat radiators by the way. I was going on about that and it's of course important to do that. The energy indicator actually was yellow in the VAB. That means that at full re full reactor utilization Ah, uh, we're not using it fully. We're only using half of it. And we should breathe tritium. So we should be fine. Anyway, now that we're boosting for orbit, let me talk to you a little bit about schedules, time, different videos. The small problem that currently I have with this series is that the episodes get progressively longer to make. The, the vessels get more complex. They take some time to design. And, well, I don't check out every aspect of their functionality that's because well that's the reason that you also see hilarious failures sometimes um, but I do have to well, I have to do a few test runs just to make sure that the concept works also the frame rates for the, the heavy lift launchers are pretty low so that takes me about half an hour each launch and of course the, the long in space burns they take a while as well I don't mind it but it's hard to fit an episode in a day so that's not going to work out so well in the future. I could do partial episodes, like where I just do 
whatever I can in a day and then upload that. But I think that will be unsatisfying because then when you're watching it, it's just unconcluded. <laughs> I wouldn't like that, that's for sure. Um, I could also do what I do now, like just keep keep to the format sort of, but just take longer between each video. And that has my preference, but I would like your uh, your input on that particular option. Because I can imagine it's nicer to have content regularly, even if it's somewhat shorter and maybe truncated. I'm not so sure which way to go yet. Then apart from that, I have, of course, the, well, not so much the problem, but the issue of moving countries and shipping computers and uh, running around figuring stuff out. So the next few weeks will be shaky concerning videos. I, I'll try and make them. I'll try and make a few in advance, but mm, expect uh, expect a few weeks with no or very few videos. Something else I might do is make short videos of different games, like check out what I have in my Steam library, um, give you a peek of that and my expert opinion on these things, of course. Uh, they are very easy for me to make. I just fire up a game, play it for 10-15 minutes, spew some comments and upload it. And well, I did some Don't Starve Let's Plays and I did the Entropy one. They're not very well watched, they have a few dozen views each. So I'm thinking either you just don't find them or you don't find it interesting to see anything else but KSP again. Um, I would welcome your comments on, on the matter. Uh, because I do like I do like talking to myself while playing video games and making videos of that and then chatting on the channel with, uh, with, with you wonderful folks. Yeah. <coughs> So let me know what you would like to see. I'm considering doing a um, a diary kind of thing with some some shots of the of the island here. The weather is really nice, so the that generates nice nice views and nice images. So I could do that. Put in some shots of spear fishing and diving stuff that I've been doing here, or not. Uh, so yeah. What I'm trying to say is don't be too expectant for daily videos in the coming weeks. I'm doing my best, but I'm very busy otherwise. Uh, yeah, with that public service announcement out of the way, let's return to our spaceship. It is at an altitude of 305 kilometers. It's still boosting somewhat sideways to orbit. We have so far accrued two kilometers per second of orbital speed that's almost half that's more than half of the way to halfway that's a fancy way of saying we're just about a quarter of the way there our fuel is depleting we're we are expending significant amounts of delta v doing orbit in this horrendous way i think what i mentioned earlier the thought of sending a refueling tanker to using conventional means straight after this um this one is not a bad idea after it's not a bad idea at all and I'll probably end up doing that I have to point up straight a few times it might have been more efficient to just strap the, the the large booster underneath this one give it a few kilometers per second of a kick and then just relying on it to to circularize the orbit but that would have meant I couldn't be talking to you while it launched because that would be five frames per second launch and I like talking to you guys, so we're doing it this way and Enfil gets to check out the fusion drive as it struggles to stay to keep everything aloft. A big pro of this ship is that it can just fire continuously so even when we're in space I can reduce the engine to make it very efficient but then just keep the throttle open so that uh, well the burn times will still be still be doable. I do wonder if we'll have... No, we'll probably not have enough Delta V in the tanks to do a powered Venus descent and then ascent again and get back to Earth. And, of course, we can't really use the atmosphere for aero braking. We can do it for the last one or two kilometers per second, but that's about it. And even, I think, entering the Venusian atmosphere at two kilometers per second, considering its thickness, might still be very dangerous for a unheat shielded craft. One thing is for sure, though, if we uh, if we send in a tanker to top it up in Earth's atmosphere, in Earth, in Earth's orbit, thank you very much. We have 40 kilometers per second of delta v at the maximum thrust. 
that will leave us with 35, and that's no, it will leave us with 37 once we're in Venus's sphere of influence. There we need about 10 to slow down and get in the atmosphere. Once we are in the atmosphere and going slowly, its thickness will help because well, we won't need a lot of engine power to set down. So let's let's budget 10 for that powered landing. Then we'll have 27. And that will leave us with just about 15 kilometers per second to ascend from EVE. And that means we will have 12 to get... No, we, we it, it will leave us with about 20 kilometers per second to lift off from EVE. From, G from Venus, I mean. Uh, sorry, um, no one heard that. That's Venus. 15 kilometers per 20 kilometers per second to lift off from Venus and then we need two more to transfer back and that would leave us with about five to six to circularize around Earth and then of course we can send a new tanker either to get Enfil and the science or to refuel the Hephaestus, that's the name of the ship I gave it and have it land because it would be nice to recover a craft that has landed on Venus I think there is a good science bonus for that as well so with a refueling stop I think we're good to go and that's what we're going to attempt in, in keeping what I said earlier and splitting the episodes up in smaller chunks you can test how much you hate that idea because I'm now just going to circularize the orbit and that's going to be it for today's video and then tomorrow we will set course for Venus and and land there so I'm going to cut out the video now I hope you enjoyed the well the, the first part of the maiden flight of the Hephaestus and my musings about about the future very much so yeah I'll see you when we are in a stable orbit and there we have it the ship safely in orbit and it used less than half its fuel still a horrendous horrend horrendous gas guzzler but that doesn't matter because we have nuclear power to assist in that so as I said mere moments ago, check back tomorrow hopefully for the next episode where we set off to Venus and see the fate of Anvil Kerman. So thanks for watching today and I'll see you guys next time.